Um, our next presenter will be Amit Chatterjee. He's a soil scientist at NDSU, and he is going to give us a, an update on his nitrogen loss research that he's been doing for the last three years. Um, that's been funded by the Minnesota Wheat Council. So I'm going to turn it over to Amit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Melissa, for uh, your uh, nice presentation and actually uh, that kind of setup for my uh, update. Uh, so I did this study for three years uh, and I have measured the nitrogen losses uh, from the spring wheat fields throughout the growing season. And uh, uh, I measured that how much nitrogen is going to be available throughout the growing season and how much uh, nitrogen there is lost through denitrification in the form of nitrous oxide. And also, uh, I measured that volatilization loss of ammonia and leaching loss of nitrate using this lysimeter. You can see those uh, uh, PVC tubes inserted into the ground so at two, uh, two feet. So I kind of uh, use a suction to collect those water samples at two feet to analyze that thing for nitrate. And gas flux, I just measured using this gas chromatograph. And at the end of the growing season, I measured the grain yield and protein content of this small area out of this field to find out that how much is grain yield and protein content for this particular uh, field. And uh, for three years, oops, sorry. So for three years, I have uh, done uh, like uh, 10 field sites in 2018, eight sites in 2019. And actually eight sites in 2020 also, but uh, one site is at uh, North Dakota. So I just kind of take that thing out so that I can just focus on this Minnesota sites. And I just want to share these results with you. So I have this applied nitrogen pounds of nitrogen per acre for these different fields. And then I have yield the in bushels per acre for these different sites, protein content or concentration and then nitrogen use efficiency of those particular fields. Now, let me tell you that how I calculated this uh, nitrogen use efficiency. So I determined that protein or content, as you can see, so I can find out, figure out that what is the nitrogen in the grain also. So it is just a conversion factor, factor of 6.25. Then we can convert that thing to the nitrogen. So that grain nitrogen and that multiplied by the yield, then I can find out that how much nitrogen is removed by the in the grain divided by that initial soil nitrogen plus fertilizer nitrogen that farmers apply. And then multiplied by 100 to get that thing that how much, what is the nitrogen use efficiency for particular fields. Now I just want to tell you that we can, every year we see some of those low ones, suppose like close to like 25 to 30 percent of nitrogen use efficiency. And at the same time, we can go up to like 78% of nitrogen use efficiency in 2018. In 2019, 74 uh, nitrogen uh, percent of nitrogen use efficiency. It indicates that uh, amount of fertilizer nitrogen applied 74% of that one is going to be uh, taken up by in the grain nitrogen. So suppose like that 2019 Heath River Falls, uh, farmers applied 100 pounds of nitrogen and 74 pounds of nitrogen is removed or taken up by the plant uh, in the and it is converted to the grain nitrogen. So it is highly efficient. Generally, we uh, average on an average, we have seen that like that 44% of nitrogen use efficiency across this uh, uh, three years in the this Minnesota field sites. And also, um, we can uh, say that the rain yield like 60 bushels per acre and protein content is 14.7%. Uh, and average fertilizer nitrogen application across these three sites is like around 150 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And one thing I just like to point out that I observed that in 2018, you can see that most of these uh, sites, they have linkered as a cultivar. But as we are moving towards this 2020, we see different sets of cultivar is arriving. Most of this, uh, some of these are like Wales Bread 9590, Egg Grill Pro. So there are different types of uh, nitro, uh, these cultivars. They are coming for this uh, into the field. Farmers are interested. 
Now, one thing that is kind of driving in the previous slide, I forgot to tell you that one that we try to measure that yield versus that fertilizer nitrogen. And we did not see any kind of relationship with this applied nitrogen or, and grain yield. So I did a kind of a correlation study to find out which factors are driving the grain yield and protein content across these 25 sites in three years. This tables is a little bit of tricky just to let you know that above the, if you are seeing things seeing that 0.25, that is that actually the R or the relationship value score and below that one, that 0.23, that is showing that your P value. If it is less than 0 0.05, that means that relationship is significant. If it is more than 0 0.05, just like that example that I you are, was show, yeah, looking at, that means that relationship is not significant. So that protein content and fertilizer nitrogen, we did not find out any relationship because as you can see, uh, P value is way higher than 0 0.05. We did not see any response of like soil nitrogen, bar density, organic matter content, phosphorus and potassium, this, uh, all these soil properties with this yield and protein content, they did not have any kind of relationship. So why we can find the relationship? What we observed that there are some, so I collected this rainfall data from this closest end on uh, weather station and try to find out that whether this monthly rainfall has any relationship or not. What we find out that whenever we are having this, uh, this April rainfall, that is like too much rainfall during this April, that has slightly negative relationship with the grain yield protein, grain yield one, and, but significant relationship with the protein content and July rainfall. So the total rainfall during the July month across these three years and like 25 site years, we find out there have some significant relationship with the July rainfall and grain protein content. So that actually uh, farmer has no hand on that thing. This uh, prevailing growing season condition is actually driving the yield and protein content. Not that much of relationship across the sites we found for this fertilizer nitrogen or soil nitrogen with uh, this grain yield and protein content. Next one that farmers are interested in that, okay, which factors are driving the nitrogen losses? Here the soil properties are really playing a big factor. So organic matter content, phosphorus, and applied means available phosphorus and potassium, they have something to do with this uh, cumulative nitrous oxide loss. And bulk density, obviously, suppose like compact how much you have this compactness and soil pH, uh, this organic matter content, they have some relationship with this cumulative ammonia volatilization. Loss cumulative means that whatever the total growing season nitro ammonia and nitrous oxide loss, that is that C stands for cumulative. And another thing we find out that whenever you are having less amount of rainfall, that is that negatively related to this July rainfall, that if you have this uh, less amount of rainfall that uh, during that one, then you have a little bit of high amount of nitrous oxide loss. But I think that is mostly because of that. If you are having this uh, not uh, like uh, uh, means uh, too much rainfall, then you are going to have this nitrogen mineralization is going on and microbes are happy. That might be contributing to this uh, nitrous oxide losses, but it is these nitrogen losses are mostly driven by these inherent soil properties. So growers are not that much of like a control on this, particularly this nitrous oxide and ammonia losses. And you can see that fertilizer nitrogen application rate and soil available nitrogen, initial soil nitrogen has not that much of influence on these nitrogen losses. So next question is that in the grower's mind that, okay, we can understand that fertilizer nitrogen is not affecting our nitrogen losses. So what is affecting our nitrogen use efficiency? This time you have really significant effect. This fertilizer nitrogen is having a significant effect on this nitrogen use efficiency. As you can see from the top graph that we have this fertilizer nitrogen on the X axis and nitrogen use efficiency on the Y axis, nitrogen use efficiency in like a percent and fertilizer nitrogen means 
that um, how much of these farmers they apply the nitrogen. And as you can see that over the time, if you are applying more than these fertilizers, you are really uh, kind of that uh, nitrogen use efficiency is de significantly declining with increasing application rate of fertilizer nitrogen. Another thing that also matters is that if you are having high amount of soil nitrogen, initial soil nitrogen, then also your nitrogen use efficiency is kind of getting declined or there is a, like a polynomial relationship. That means that they have other factors that are controlling this nitrogen losses. But you can see that if you have like a high initial soil nitrogen, then you are going to, it is going to be flattened out at 50, like around like 70 pounds of nitrogen per acre. If you have like an initial soil nitrogen, 70 pounds of nitrogen per acre, then your nitrogen use efficiency is kind of uh, dropping. One thing I like to point out that most, some of these fields that I used, uh, these sites are applied, have applied nitrogen in the fall. So that time you, they already applied the nitrogen. So you can imagine they have high initial available soil nitrogen, initial soil nitrogen. Uh, when I started uh, working in during this uh, uh, this uh, in the springtime, so whatever it may be, be, but it indicates that if you are having this high amount of nitrogen in the soils, or you are applying too much of nitrogen, that is actually reducing your nitrogen use efficiency. As I have shown you that yield and protein content, both they are driven by this more by these other factors like growing season condition rather than this fertilizer nitrogen application or soil nitrogen application or other soil properties. So just keep that thing in the mind that if you are applying too much of nitrogen, it is only you are losing this nitrogen use efficiency. Maybe you don't have like a bunch of nitrogen losses, but it is just like sitting out there. Let me tell you that one so that it, will, it is like a complex bunch of data so that you, I just want to present all, all the data for last, thus like two sites. Ada, uh, that's GM stands for green meadows that we have two sites in 2020 at Ada and one is nearby these green meadows and another one site is rusted no tile. And in case of rusted no tile, we have like nitrogen use efficiency only 33%. In case of Ada, as you can see, NUE stands for nitrogen use efficiency is like 60. So I just want to show you that why these two sites, they have like almost kind of similar and why one site has like a 33% nitrogen use efficiency, another site has like 60% nitrogen use efficiency. As you can see, they have like this ADA, they have like significantly really big, uh, almost 10 bushels extra yield in case of like 77 bushels per acre. And in case of uh, this uh, Rostad, they have like 68.4 uh, bushels per acre, but uh, they have this uh, high protein content in case of this Rostad no tile. And it is just like a little bit less in case of Ada. Uh, Ada GM, they have like Cultivar Agri Pro and Rostad no tile site has Prosper. So that is the two difference in Cultivar. Another difference is that it is like uh, in case of Ada, they have less, little bit of less amount of rainfall, 7.6 inches. In case of like rusted no tile, they have like a 10.7 inch. And as you can see on the bottom graph, they have bunch of rainfall during the late growing season. But what it is making the difference? You don't see that much of this nitrous oxide loss. Uh, this not a difference in this ammonia volatilization loss like 0 0.36 and 1.14. It is not that much. One pounds and 0.36 pounds for the whole grain is not a big difference. Nitrate on the top PPM, that means that how much nitrate at two feet depth that they are finding in 2020. And as you can see, they just get four PPM or two PPM and they're not much difference. But what it is making difference, as you can see this soil nitrogen, in six inch, zero to six inch, as you can see at Ada, they don't have that much of nitrogen is living out there. Although they applied like 107, only 170 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And this raster, they applied like 190 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And as you can see that they have like high nitrogen availability throughout the growing seasons, but 
they don't need the wheat doesn't need that much of nitrogen like they have like 187 pounds of nitrogen and they end up like in the growing season like six and four pounds of nitrogen during like uh july of 10th but in case of this ada they have like a small amount of nitrogen left in that uh to like two pounds or three pounds at the deep uh, like at zero to six inch so they utilize most of the nitrogen they have applied in case of ada like 170 pounds of nitrogen in case of rostad notal, they applied extra 20 pounds of nitrogen, but it did not really increase their yield that much. So that it is just like reducing their nitrogen use efficiency. On the top, like that blue and red orange kind of graphs that it is showing that uh, we have not that much of nitrogen left in July 24, only like 13 pounds in zero to six inch and nine pounds. But you can see in rostad notal, they have like 26 pounds of nitrogen left over uh, at the end of the growing season. So that most of the uh, uh, plants there could not use that much of nitrogen because of this high nitrogen availability. So you need to have an idea about that how much your soil organic matter is kind of supplying nitrogen and just apply, don't apply too much of nitrogen. So in conclusion of three years, uh, I don't go that much of in details, but one thing is that this rainfall growing seasons, rainfall during the growing season, that really drives a lot. as uh, Melissa mentioned in her presentation that, well, environment is really a big factor, genetics and environment. What type of cultivar you are selecting, that kind of really matters. In case of nitrogen use efficiency, it kind of ranges between 25 to 78. I ask uh, growers that don't apply too much nitrogen and you can improve your nitrogen use efficiency to like 50 to 60 at least just by reducing this nitrogen. Fertilizer nitrogen application rate Soil available nitrogen is kind of really reducing the nitrogen. So that's all about because I have next presented, I should not cross my time limit. And as I mentioned, this nitrogen loss is more driven based by this, uh, uh, this uh, organic matter kind of content and site characteristics. That's all. If you have any questions. Any question? Melissa, no questions so far? I don't think we have any questions. But if you guys come up with any questions, you can give Amit a call or email. Um, he's a soil scientist at NDSU.